Man, I sure do love April 14th, 2024. It was a day when Americans realized that Mustangs can be pink. I can't remember something else to go along with this joke. But most important of all, we got a new set of Splatoon 3 World Champs that night. Day. I think. But of course, like usual, we can't have good things. Walt, please, please just hear me out, please! <laughs> so long story short, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there were some uh, videos that leaked out from the team of Jackpot, uh, where... Fuck, I can't even sugarcoat this. It was bad. It was, like, really bad. Uh, let's see. They they were calling each other monkeys. Uh, they, they said a lot of slurs, like, both racial and, um, you know, the other one. And uh, it got really bad, basically. That's the best way I can put it. Is there anything else for this? I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. And I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. So what we came across that day in the woods was obviously unplanned. And the reactions you saw on tape were raw. Oh, they were oh, oh, shit. Sorry, forgot I was still making this. They didn't make a video when they apologized. They made a lot of tweets in response to this. And a whole Google Doc that just looks rushed as is. So here, we'll, we'll take a bit of a deep dive looking at all this. The first statement comes from uh, this team's coach named Ren, and it reads, Today, it came to light that members of my team, Jackpot, namely Leafy and Madness, had been using and encouraging through use bigoted language ranging from jokes about joining the KKK to referring about their POC friend as a monkey, among many other jokes I've seen making the rounds. It genuinely sickens me to see messages like this, knowing the amount of time I've spent with them. But more than that, it upsets me that, though I didn't see messages to this degree, I did see signs of potentially hurtful rhetoric, like the more recent monkey clip, and just generally quote-unquote edgy humor. Yet, I wasn't the one to speak up and call everyone out for their behavior. For that, I deeply apologize. As the coach, and especially as the eldest on the team, I should be setting myself as an example for everyone on the team to follow, to learn from, and in failing to hold my friends accountable, I too failed in that aspect as an adult and as a person. Today I have thoroughly chewed each and every one of them out, not only for their past behavior where appropriate, but also for each individual's behavior following the leaks this morning. I refrained from dropping a statement publicly until after some of the members had come forth, as I didn't want my own words to overshadow the voices of those posting their evidence, nor those that are personally affected by harmful rhetoric like this on a regular basis. Instead, I did what I could to spread those messages with my platform throughout the day. I hope today results in positive change for them moving forwards, and I hope the situation as a whole serves as a very harsh lesson that they may grow from. It will be for me, at the very least, and I promise to use my platform as a means of shedding light on marginalized voices in whatever way I'm able. To the members of Jackpot as well, I'm sorry again from the bottom of my heart for my inaction. Yet, though I'm certain that the team is set to disband anyways, I can't in good faith continue to support the team as it stands. For that reason, regardless of what becomes of it, I won't be a part of the team in any form moving forward. When looking at this apology, I mean, I can't help but just think about one thing, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but assuming that he's been on this team coaching them for a long time, how would you only just now find out that this has been going on? There is no way you didn't see any of these clips beforehand and thought, hey, maybe I should just tell them as a coach that they shouldn't be doing these things. Because if, and they did, they won the Splatoon 3 World Championships, they represent the entire community. It, it kind of baffles me how you're just blind to it. But, I mean, again, I could be wrong. It could just be because he wasn't on the team for that long. But it still just surprises me that their own coach didn't even see this happening. When really they should have. 
So for this one, I actually had to pull out the old OBS so I could screen capture this because there's it's, it's an entire Google Doc. Actually, I think the same goes for like the other ones because they're all Google Docs except for their coaches. So uh, here, let's start with, uh, who is this one? This one's Jared. Uh, so it says, Twitter word limit is hard to work around, so I hope you all take the time to read this as I address each of the following points. The N-word screenshot, madness and leafy screenshots, the Zero video, FM360 Komodo friendship, apology and the future. Trigger warning, racism, homophobia, I, I, as usual. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, first one reads, uh, N-word screenshot. I take full accountability for what is shown in the screenshot. The screenshot is dated back to 2020, when I was 16. I hung around people who use this as a way of expression, and I stupidly thought if other people were saying it, then it was okay for me to say too. Over time, I've learned that this line of reasoning doesn't excuse my actions at all. It was extremely wrong for me to say it, and I'm sorry for what I said, and it hasn't happened since. Here, here's my issue with, with this apology, alright? Um, he's saying that he, he was hanging around other people who were saying it. Let, let me just bring this to the table. I have a lot of, uh, of, of friends who are people of color, you know? And, you know, on occasion, they do say the N-word, they do say it with the soft A. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to say it as well. They can say it they, if they want to. I'm not offended by it. But if I'm hanging around with them, I'm not going to copy what they say on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not going to copy that. It's not okay for me to do that. So what makes you think you hanging around with these people who are actively doing it automatically makes it okay for you to say it just as much as they can? What kind of reasoning is that? Th that's what baffles me about this. Jesus. <laughs> Oh God, what is this? I saw these screenshots beforehand, mind you, but I didn't expect him to actually include all of them here. Um, I'm gonna, I might have to even just censor this part entirely because there's some really bad stuff in here. So this apology reads, while I don't know the true dates of some of these screenshots, I was not around Jackpot or friends with Leafy and Madness until I joined Jackpot in March of 2022. When I became close friends with them, they weren't saying these kinds of phrases around me, and I wasn't aware that these were the pa They weren't saying these kinds of phrases around me, and I wasn't aware that these were past phrases that they had made. I'm sorry I didn't speak out against my friends and allowed language like this to slide in my presence. Example, Jackbot calling people monkeys in comms. I should have personally done something about that. I will do better to not only hold myself and my friends accountable on our way of speaking and treating others, but will try to be more aware of it happening to begin with. I'll be honest, I, I understand these are your friends that are doing this, and you know, like any other, you know, good friend out there, you would want to do anything to defend them for it. But when it when something like this happens, you have to step in. You know it's bad. There's no way you can just sit there and let it happen. Uh, next part, uh, Zero video, which kindly linked to, I believe, it was this. Oh. It just respawned. Fuck. Wow. No way, bro. No, no way. No way. Okay, let's read, what we, let's read what he had to say. I am close with Zero and interact with him basically daily. I should have held him responsible and opted not to hang out with him if he was going to act that way. However, I was silent because I thought his actions were not my own. While this is true to some extent, I am a figure in the community and I have a responsibility to hold the people I play with, even if they are my friends, accountable for their actions and making this space safer for marginalized people where I can. I'm sorry I didn't. Moving forward, I will do my best to make sure this doesn't happen again. I will work on myself and speak up if the people I associate with say something inappropriate. I have no words for that, dude. That, that was... That's awful. That is terrible. I don't... Fuck, dude. Uh, next up, we have the FM360 Komodo friendship, uh, which includes these screenshots. 
Um, there's a Discord uh, screenshot there. You can pause to read it if you want. Um, let's see. Uh, he says, It is true that I have been friends with FM on and off since 2018. After the situation with his gross comments to Q, I've never once enabled him to participate in Splatoon Comp. Others have tried to support and petition for his unbanning, but after that situation, I have not. However, I thought it would be okay to still interact with him as our relationship was strictly in DMs and occasionally on Twitch. I've confronted FM about his actions multiple times over the years and attempted to hold him accountable for the things he caused and done. Here's a recent example of this, which includes... Uh, two screenshots, uh, one of them reading uh, from Jared saying, okay, then handle the consequences of what you did in the past. Then I'm assuming this is FM. Uh, they said, I tried doing that. Splat safety doesn't listen. Like, and then Jared replies, yeah, that's part of the consequences you have under your name. Uh, then Jared continues, uh, wait, these are in the wrong order. These are in the wrong order. The bottom one happened before the top one. Uh, the bottom one reads, Jared uh, says, no, I ban you because I genuinely get annoyed or it's one of my mods who are uncomfortable with you in chat because guess what? Your actions still have consequences even today. And then FM replies, so stupid, bro. Um, and then Jared continues uh, by saying, part of me did feel responsible to still be his friend you, since I've known him since I was 14 and I thought I owed it to him as a friend to try and help him to get better, be there for him. And that's why I've still stayed in contact with him. Anyone who has been in my streams knows I ban him when he starts being stupid in chat. By letting him around me and jackpot and servers and Twitch, however, I realize I still give him an avenue to interact with people with, of the greater community. Comp or not. And through that, he is enabled to have a presence on Twitter to continue to harass people including, but not limited to, Taco, Muti, Kara, and more. And please correct me if I mispronounce those. Uh, I can't stop him from being on Twitter, but I think it's clear him being around is an active detriment to me and the people around me. So I've cut all ties and will not be speaking to him ever again. I'm sorry for not doing more against him. Finally, we're at the very end of this part of the apology, and it reads, uh, Apology in the future. I'm very sorry for my original tweet deflecting the blame and not holding myself accountable. I was told something is better than nothing, but that's just not true, and I should have taken my time. I wanted to give out a fast statement so that everyone knew I saw the tweets, but I should have waited until I finished writing this doc before posting anything regarding it. I know a lot of people looked up to us, Jackpot and me personally. I'm sorry that I let you all down. Thank you for reading. <sighs> okay. I don't like this apology and I will tell you why. Starting off, this looks rushed. This looks, like, this is in the wrong order. Like a lot of this is just, hey, trust me, bro. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be good. I'm, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna do better in the future. Trust me. You fucked up this bad. How do you expect anyone in the community to trust you after that? This is horrible. This is terrible. This is like really bad for your reputation. You are one quarter of the world champions right now, and you expect. As a representative of the North American Splatoon community, to just take this apology at face value? Come on now. A lot of the next few apologies made afterward were pretty much much of the same thing. Q's apology mainly covers much of uh, why they were so silent about the whole situation. And even since then, when looking at their Twitter profile, it now, their bio now reads X Splatoon 3 2024 World Champ. Which, I mean, is understandable. There, there were some pretty fucked things in here, including one Discord message, which she claims was read completely wrong, and mainly because it was written completely wrong. But uh, to some extent, I feel this, I mean, this is a decent apology. I mean, I, I, I can't find anything wrong with it, but that's subjective. That's My opinion is subjective here. It all depends on how you want to take it. Uh, Leafy's apology, though, is another story. He talks about all these different screenshots, because most, most of these screenshots come from him. Um, one screenshot reading that he was going he was going to join the KKK because one person started to make him hate. I'm not even going to finish that, but you get the idea. Um, I feel like he just, in my opinion, again, subjective. You can believe what you want. I feel like 
it's just making excuses especially in the part about calling calling someone else a monkey his whole reasoning on that was because people in a discord server were making this joke about this one person and even after the fact apparently the person was fine with it so he thought it would be okay but looking back on it it was something bad and he felt really bad about it and then you have that whole ai like shiny spongebob art looking thing which was also in this bad like discord server uh and he said he's already apologized about that i look no matter how many times you apologize about it it's not okay it doesn't look okay by any means why you thought this was okay which i get these these guys are kids most of these are kids who were like 16 they were like 14 when stuff like this was happening you you don't do that it's not okay and even back then people were, were were saying like despite all the edgy content that was out there at the time like hey man like don't do this it's gonna bite you in the ass in the future and it very clearly did so at the end of it all it just seems like jackpot is going to be disbanding entirely after this whole situation which i don't blame them i doubt nintendo would want to welcome them back onto their stage to compete for another world championship i mean i think nintendo having their strict guidelines on being a part of these tournaments is pretty reasonable at this point because why would you ever want anyone like this to be a part of the goddamn tournament why would you want anyone like this representing a community for your game of all things this is an awful a very insensitive situation and i really hope that the next set of champions who step up to the plate really gets their act together and really shows how dedicated the splatoon competitive community really is because we cannot have individuals like this representing the entire region of this game it is a terrible thing to have happen and I can't believe that for about almost two months now, we've been calling these individuals our new world champs. These are not champions. These are a group of pathetic losers who thought it would be okay to act this way and be insensitive to multiple groups. And they went for the top prize in a community filled with diverse and unique people. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed my rambling. Uh, and I will see you all 